Howdy folks, little John, uh, once again five on Friday, uh, a little bit different this week, I've got uh, having a bit of beer support and not craft beer, uh, a little bit of commercial stuff, now there's a reason behind this, uh, now I'm, I'm not getting into uh, doing beer reviews or anything like that, uh, last weekend as most of you will be aware, had a, had a brew day on Sunday. Um, we knocked up, uh, knocked up the um, bloody bourbon barrel honey smoked porter. Uh, and I had um, trying to brew day together with the uh, local brew club in the end. Had one mate, uh, Jason, come over. Um, and Part of the afternoon, we're discussing a few different beers. He, he brought me um, a couple of beers from a um, brewery called Pioneer out, um, out near Orange, uh, which is almost local. Um, but in the process, he was asking me when we were discussing, he asked me whether I tried the, uh, this, the new Han, yeah, uh, it's, it's, what's it called, Ultra Crisp. Um, and now I hadn't, and um, I've just been a bit advertising about this and, um, you know, I usually get around to trying these newer sort of beers, but, um, so we don't get a lot of options in town, but I'm, I, I mean, no, generally no hurry to go out for this sort of things, it's ultra crisp and super dry and all this sort of stuff, um, just basically because you've really got, generally know what you're in for, something pretty fairly ordinary, so, but, I was down the, yeah, I was down doing some shopping earlier in the week and bought stuff it. I uh, couldn't find any um, spirits that I hadn't tried um, or for something that was on a decent special. So I thought I'd grab a bottle. So what I've done is <laughs> I'll try it while I'm bloody doing a, doing a video this week. Uh, bit of hard, ultra crisp. Uh, geez, it barely fizz, that's always a good sign. Yeah, apparently they're using a revolutionary brewing process using rice instead of wheat or barley. Now, I don't know whether it's all rice or if it's only partly, I would assume that it's only partly rice. Um, flour, flour, gluten free. Okay. Yeah. And as they aren't required to actually put the ingredients on the bottle, you don't really know for sure, but it smells every bit as bitey as a typical sort of adjunct, adjunct lager. There's not a <laughs> no head to be seen. And there's definitely no character on the eyes. But, uh, and while I was at it, uh, sitting on the shelf was a whole row of ultra dry, super dry, ultra crisp, bloody, a whole mix of them. Now this one's Steersman. Um, I have had a bottle of this sitting around here for a while. Um, I don't know if it's ultra dry. I end up tossing it out. I don't think I ever actually drank it. Um, but anyway, if I grab this fella, this is a full strength. There is a lighter, um, mid-strength version of the same thing but I'll give him a whirl you know this one obviously is supposedly real beer with well there's no mention of any rice or anything like that and it's poured with some head that's a good start oh, it's, it's got that bloody nasty smell of all these bloody current run of trendy beers I've got. It's, it's like that Pride of Ringwood dirt smell but it's amped up and it's, I don't know, I'm assuming it comes from the bloody, you know, the extracts that they use, hop extracts, so I'm not sure, but anyway. Now we've waffled on to that for long enough, I'll just get to what the actual topic of the day is, and that is liquid yeast. Now this, topic has been brought up by um, Chris Newman 
Uh, hey, Chris, how you mate? Um, and this is in response to last week's discussion about um, buying ingredients and stuff and being aware of it, like checking dates and exactly what you're getting and things. And one of the things I mentioned in that was buying liquid yeast. Um, you know, and Chris commented about it and uh, just asked a little bit of, yeah, uh, a bit more information on um, just a couple of little things with the liquid yeast. Now, I've done videos on starters before, um, so when I'm referring to a starter, you can give it, I'll put a link up to the to the starter video so you can go back and watch it, um, and that'll show the stir plate and different things. But, so it's just, just going to be a bit more um, general discussion with it today. Um, I'm not going to go into how to work with it, but just, just get around the edges of it. Okay. Anyway, so liquid yeast. And what I was just what I was discussing was last week was Y yeast, um, and I like to buy out of date packets because they're dirt cheap, and then build them up. Um, and in part of that conversation, I was talking about you know, being aware of your use by dates because these things don't last that long to have you know good viable numbers. Uh, so first thing you look, you know, so Y yeast is probably the most commonly most well known liquid yeast. Been around for quite a while. Um, I've used them plenty, and they're, they're a good they're a good product. Smack packs. They come with a um, little bit of wort in there in, with the yeast. Uh, there's a nutrient pack in there which you need to find, and you smack it. You, you play around with the packet, and it's, they come just flat. They do can spill a little bit sometimes. They get, but you basically, you just find the packet, work it into a corner, and then bang that quite hard. Hence what they call a smack pack. You just smack it with your fist, um, and it pops that in the sachet. And then you can mix that around. And you let that pack sit out for a little while. And the nutrient leaves, they swell up. And the pack will get nice and big and fat over about 24, 48 hours. And then you know that it's uh, got good viable yeast and it's right in the pitch. Now, so you've got white yeast, um, white labs is also very common, uh, very popular and becoming more popular um, as, as um, more brewers are getting into the uh, liquid yeast. There's a few other brands around, there's Imperial, uh, which haven't been around a real long time. Uh, I've used one of their yeasts um, with reasonable success, uh, haven't done a lot of study on them. Uh, there is, oh, I can't think of the name of the other one off the top of my head. I uh, was just thinking about it earlier, not bloody, um, yeah, it was. But there, um, there's some that come in a, in a can, which I think are starting to make their way. Uh, and there is, I have seen one other uh, mob getting about recently, which I believe is possibly Australian. Um, I could be wrong, I'm not, not going to quote a name, so it doesn't really matter. But they're out there, and the reason you want to be looking at a liquid yeast is simply from the scope of variety. Now, dry yeast, I mean a few years back you were fairly limited on what, you, what options you had. You know, you had your basic USO5 and you know, SO4, Windsor, Nottingham, you know, your, your, your various couple of lagers. Um, and you didn't have a lot of option. There was a few liquid yeast getting about. And then, you know, as obviously as brewing is becoming more popular, and craft brewing particularly is becoming more, more popular and more common, then there's a lot more yeast strains being developed. Uh, And that's grown. That's good for from the home brewer. From the home brewer, it means that we've 
for the home brewer, it means that we've got the option to play around with flavour profiles in our beer more, more than just grain and hops. Uh, so we can get a different finish to a beer in the same beer that we always make by using the same grain and the same hops, we can get a different result by using different yeasts. Um, now that can be seen, I've done a couple of videos with, uh, I've done a USA 5 compared to M44 and I've also done it compared to VRY97. Um, and I've done a lot of a lot of batches, a lot of split batches, and I, split, and I, and I do half with different yeasts. Um, so you can, you can go back and have a look at some of the tasting videos and, and you'll see where they are. Uh, so it gives us an option to try a lot of stuff. Why is the list the list of variety in the Y East juice currently is huge and it's getting bigger all the time, the same with um, white bugs are getting quite an extensive list as well. So it means you're able to more accurately create or recreate um, a particular style. Now you can look into the yeast and um, and a lot of the time you can get an idea of where they've actually came from. Um, rarely do you actually get the specific brewery, but you may get information on more, more sort of specific styles. Um, like, you, you, like you can get an Urkel strain, uh, obviously which comes from Urkel. You can get a Budvar strain, uh, which comes from Budge de Vicky. Um, you can get a Mexican Lager strain, it's an example. Um, exactly which brewery it's from, they don't tell you. Is it from Corona? Is it from Seoul? Is it from San Miguel? Who's not? No one's really sure. Uh, but it's giving you that style. And the same with the, with the pommy yeast. Like I've, got, I've got a few here. Uh, that's just a basic car scale. But on the weekend I used 1099 which is a uh, which is whip bread. Um, now that's a specific area of, of England and when you when you look at that you, if you narrow it down you can get a bit of an idea of what probably what brewery it came from. Um, same with that one, Thames, the Thames Valley Ale. Um, if you're going to go back and you can locate what br breweries are in that area you're going to get an idea of where they come from. 1069 West Yorkshire Ale. Um, supposedly Pretty sure this is. I'm pretty sure it's the 1069. Um, is the yeast off the um, the Yorkshire squares that they use at Samuel Smiths? Uh, so, you, if you're asked, looking for a particular kind of beer that you want to recreate, then you can get the yeast profile, um, and because quite often you'll get the grain and the hops and they'll be right but you won't get the yeast profile right and if you don't get the yeast profile right then the final beer is not going to be right uh, you can get close but it's not going to be and sometimes that's all it comes down to is just that yeast strain and breweries in general are fairly uh, tight lipped about their particularly their yeast strains um, because that is such a big part of the final flavour um, they're quite often happy to tell you the grain bill and what hops they use. They don't tell you exactly what amounts they use their hops or exactly how they run their mash schedules. But they'll give you the information of what's in there and you can work or play around with it. But the yeast they're a little bit more, <laughs> they hold on to it a little bit, little bit more. So, you can take your brewing to, brewing to another level by getting these liquid yeast. Now, there are a few things that you need to take, and this is one thing that Chris has asked about. Um, he asked how important cold transport was on your liquid yeast. Now, dry yeast has been put into a state of suspension where it's not really doing anything. It's alive, but it's not alive. Um, liquid yeast is alive. It's live yeast packaged. Uh, so as a result, you need to keep, you need to look after it. And subjecting it to extreme temperature fluctuations can kill s substantial amounts of yeast cells. Now, why yeast, as an example, comes out? They're telling you you've got a hundred billion cells in a pack. Uh, now that's on the date it was manufactured. The date it was packaged, it had a hundred billion cells. Now that will die. So when you're transporting that yeast, you want to keep it 
cool yeast stores best at fridge temperature basically um, yeah in low single figures yeah two three four degrees it goes to sleep and doesn't really get knocked around and it, will, it can stay in that sort of state for quite a long time now why are you getting your yeast transported because we don't all have a home brew shop just around the corner so quite often we have to get it transported in via via post and that means that that yeast is going to be out of the fridge and subjected to the temperature wherever it's transporting for how long, how long it takes to get to to you from the supplier now if you're out here where i am it can take six or seven days from that package leaving the home brew supplier to the day it turns up here now if that's summer that means it can be sitting and transporting in trucks in 40 odd degree temperatures and if it's in the middle of summer quite often it can be 50 degrees in the back no problem at all be 50 degrees 55 degrees in the back of a truck uh, that's a long way from being ideal for your yeast so most suppliers when you're looking to buy liquid juice will give you the option to buy some you know ice chips uh, to keep your um help keep your package cool just this sort of thing just a little little ice pack okay and they, most of them sell these for about 50 cents a go um when you buy your yeast and they'll wrap them up with your yeast you know so you've got it, one of these in wrap it up with a couple of layers of um bubble wrap and things to help insulate it and it's to help try and keep that keep that bloody yeast cool now if you're buying liquid yeast from a supplier who doesn't have these you're not buying yeast from them it's that simple don't buy liquid yeast i mean unless it's the middle of winter and you know it's going to turn up overnight if you're not getting an ice brick with your yeast don't buy it not gonna not it's not it's not an option you just don't do it okay go to find a supplier who will give you the option for the uh, ice bricks um it's good insurance um yeast are relatively hardy but you don't need them getting knocked around that hard if you can avoid it and at 13 13 14 dollars packet for 50 cents for a one one of these or even a dollar um to keep that yeast cool it's definitely worth it okay now obviously if you're in a major regional center or in a city where you can get your, your stuff delivered and it's going to be you know maybe overnight or two days then you're in a, certainly in a better situation than I am um, and these packs stay cold for a long time I've you know I've got to get yeast brought up as like I said it can take you know five or six days to get here uh, so again I've got to I've sort of look as much as I can to where my yeast is coming from and especially if it's going to be something um, they'll give me two packs but these have turned up after four after four or even five days in the post and you open them up and it's still cool you know inside so when they're insulated properly they do last really well so make sure you're doing that with your um when you're getting them transported um now that's it. the other thing i discussed like we're looking at the dates that are on the packets now the dates themselves aren't a real big issue because with any liquid yeast, given the fact that I said it, that, that it is alive, you should be doing some form of starter with them. Now, the reason for that, because it says, it's quite, and it says on here, 100 billion yeast cells inoculate up to five gallons. Yeah, and they quite happily say, uh, they're like, you know, up, up to five gallons of 1060 war. Okay, now, as much as I don't agree with that being enough yeast initially to pitch in a 1060 uh, gravity warp, 
if even if it was, let's just say it was, you had to get that packet the day it was made to have a hundred billion cells. Now, fairly well accepted that yeast will die off at the rate of about three percent of viable cells every single day. Now that's three percent of the total cells that are alive from day to day, not three percent of the original total cells. So as your yeast is getting older, it's getting less and less cells that are actually viable within it, um, which means your need for a starter gets more and more important. Uh, you need to use a pitching rate calculator. Um, I almost exclusively use the calculator through Brewer's Friend. Um, it seems to be very well, very good on the mark for its numbers uh, and its predictions and what you need and it doesn't make ridiculously high assumptions on your yeast numbers um, which I like uh, my own study is and again this is just this is discussed on, on previous posts um, on, where, on where yeast is up but that, that's more on dry packets but either way you can get your um, so you can get your packet and if it's been made say two months ago you can punch in the date and it will calculate how many viable cells there are in your packet. So if it's say two months down, the, if it's been two months since it was manufactured, uh, you might have somewhere around, yeah, 35% of cells viable. Um, now this is only, I'm only pulling numbers out of my head. This isn't the actual number. I had you'd have to run it yourself. It possibly, possibly more in the sort of low 40s with the 3% change, but. So if, you, if that's the case and you've got, say, 40 billion cells um, and you are pitching into a, even a 1050B, you're realistically wanting somewhere around 160 to 180 billion cells to get that job done effectively. So you're well and truly short of the mark. Um, so that's where you need to look at making a starter. Um, and this is what throws and scares a lot of people off using liquid yeast. Oh, starters are they're, they're difficult, they're pain. Now they're hard. They, you know, you, you got to pay money for you know for dry malt stuff to make them. Yeah, you got to pay for dry malt, but the reality is, uh, in the most most cases where you're buying freshish liquid yeast, um, a one-step starter is enough to get yeast cells to pitch unless you're going into a lager um, and generally somewhere around a litre to a litre and a half of wort uh, will be sufficient to do that um, so that is not a difficult process for anybody you can use coffee jars, Makona coffee jars these are great, they're bloody fabulous, you're really good thing having, having the brew, especially if you want to play with yeast now these aren't the real big jars you could use a bigger jar but um, I use those more for when I'm doing the washing, but you can use that for a starter. Wort, boiled, cooled in there, put your yeast in, stir it up and give it a bloody shake every, um, yeah, every so often. Again, watch that video on, on starters. You don't need to have the fangled stir plate and the bloody and the, and the drug lab beakers and flasks and things you just need a jar you've got at home a bottle that's just a litre bottle from you know they're, they're from the reject shop two bucks big w kmart stuff like that pick them up you know, nice and cheap no problem use a long neck um your beer brewer you've probably got bottles sitting around um yeah use those split it between two stubbies a bit of foil over the top you're making a yeast starter. As long as the yeast has got wort that it can eat the sugar in, it's going to grow. Um, but you need to do it, and you need to get you need to get sort of comfortable with that process. It's not difficult. I said, watch the videos. Um, anyone can do it. 
Mm. And if you, I said, if you want to, if you want to get some experimentation on, maybe not experimentation, just a little bit more variety, and a little bit more interest in your beer. Look into your liquid yeast. Um, now, you put a different twist on the beer you're always been doing. Um, try, try something a little bit different. Well, this fella, this one I picked up just last week uh, when I was getting the order for last week's brew. Rocky Mountain Lager. So it's a can Canadian. Canadian lager the yeast. Um, it would probably work really good with like a Kolsch style or a, yeah, yeah, even a light um, American Pilsner. But I'm going to use it on half a batch of Brute IPA, which is the next brew I'm doing. I'm going to do a traditional Brute IPA and uh, I'm going to do the other half with, with that Rocky Mountain lager. I'm going to get that started up today. And I'm starting, I'm going to give it two weeks to build up because that is. Um, Manufactured January last year, uh, so it's going to take a little bit of work, but it'll get there, and I'll have a and I'll, and I'll have plenty of yeast, and that's uh, something you'll see next week. The uh, the IPA, but that a bag of dry malt, and that it's really all you need to get into much wider experience with yeast. Saucepans and stove, you've got them already. That you've probably got sitting at home. Your missus has probably got a bunch of jars in the cupboard somewhere. If not, next time you bloody shop, tell them, tell them to buy yourself a jar of McKenna coffee. Rinse it out. And there you go. Use some liquid, use some liquid yeast. Now, if you've got any questions, um, yeah, stick them down the bottom. Yeah, always happy to answer questions, have a chat about uh, liquid juice. If you, yeah, want, you, yeah, if you want to clarify how you how you should be doing a certain process, or yeah, how to work out cells and things like that, ask the way. If you haven't subscribed to Little John, hit the subscribe button down there in the corner and get subscribed. Come along, learn all this exciting stuff. If you haven't tried Han Super Crisp, I suggest you don't bother. That's two very uninspiring beers. Very low in flavour. Very low in character. I can't see where you'd ever want to drink those by choice. But anyway, that's me. That's it. Little job for the day. Liquid juice. Get into them. Give them, a, give them a go. So, till I see you next time. We're uh, drinking beer. We're brewing beer or we're uh, talking beer. Good brewing. <laughs>